Hi everybody, I'm Alejandra with the Osceola Library System and welcome to Paper Quilling for Beginners. Today I'm going to teach you some basic shapes for paper quilling, talk about some tools, and then walk you through how to make this simple floral project that you can do with paper quilling. So for those of you who don't know, paper quilling is the art of rolling strips of paper into different shapes like this and then creating more elaborate or simple works of paper art using these rolled up like strips of paper. So before we get started with this project, um, I'm just going to talk to you about some tools that you may need. So I would definitely recommend a slotted quilling tool. Um, once you get close up, you'll see it a little bit better, but there is like a little slot right in the center where you can put in your strips of paper and just roll it up more easily. Some people do also use toothpicks or like a chopstick instead, but I find that this tool makes it a lot more easy to roll up your paper. Um, I would definitely recommend some tweezers. That definitely helps with the placement of these smaller shapes, especially when you're working on a small surface like this. Um, you'll need just some regular school glue. They do also sell this glue with a, a needle tip that makes it easier for putting just very small amounts of glue on your, on your strips. Um, regular glue is good for now, but if you do uh, plan to continue this hobby, I would recommend getting the needle tipped glue bottle. And a pair of scissors, definitely, for cutting down your longer strips. And you will need some paper strips. So I got a pack of these already pre-cut from Amazon, and it came with the little quilling tool as well. But you can definitely cut out your own strips from colored paper that you have at home. I would recommend keeping it to about one fourth of an inch of thickness. So that's that's the same thickness I used for this project. So you can see it's quite quite thick and it'll be easier to maneuver. So the first one we're gonna do is a closed circle. So maybe you can see the slotted tool a little bit better here, but there's a slot in the middle there where I will place my paper. And then you're just gonna roll this all the way down to the end of the strip. And then for a closed circle, obviously we do want it to be tight. We don't want very many gaps between the paper. And just roll it all the way to the end. And then I do recommend that if you are cutting your own paper strips at home, if you have a thicker paper, like a cardstock type paper, I would recommend using that as opposed to um, just regular paper. It is easier to roll thicker paper. And then just a dab of glue there. You really don't need very much. Like just a dot like that is enough. Actually, it might be too much. Yep, as you can see, it's a little bit too much. So I'll just take that excess glue and wipe it off. And pull it off your tool. Maybe hold on to it for a few seconds while the glue sets. And there you have a closed circle. And then next we're going to do an open circle. So this is like the base of a lot of these other shapes. So again, we're going to put our paper in our slotted tool. And for this one, you're just going to want to roll it a little bit more loosely. And we do want some gaps there between the paper. I know I'm rolling it kind of quickly just for the sake of time, but when you first start out, you do kind of roll the paper a little bit more slowly. Okay, and again, our dab of glue. Don't need very much. Take it off my tool there. And there we have a more open circle. So you can see there's more gaps in this one than there is here, and this one's a little bit bigger. So now for our teardrop shape, I already have here, oops, I have an open circle here. So for that, for a teardrop shape, just make an open circle and then you're gonna want to pinch the end there and you have a teardrop shape. And then for our marquee, again, you're gonna start with an open circle and then you're gonna want to pinch one end. So you get a teardrop and then pinch the other end. And then you get a marquee. And we're going to use a lot of this one for or a lot of the petal shape for our project here. So you can see that's mostly teardrop shapes. And then for our square or diamond, you're going to make your marquee shape and then turn it and then just pinch it on the other sides too. This one's a little bit trickier. Yep, and then you have a square or a diamond if you hold it that way. So I do already have my shapes quilled here. And then I have already kind of started my project. So what I did was make about four closed circles and I just placed them where I wanted my flowers. 
And then you can see I used these teardrop shapes and just glued them around the circle. So I'll go ahead and show you how I did that. So I have a teardrop shape here. Gonna get some glue on the bottom of that. And then just place it all the way around your little center there, your little circle. And you can see on these I did, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think on these, six on this one. So it just depends on what kind of look you want for your flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick on some more petals here. Okay, and then you'll pretty much just do that all the way around your circle as you see fit. And then for my stem here, I have some glue. I might need a little bit more glue actually. So I have some glue on a sheet right here. And what you're gonna want to do when you're laying down these strips is just dip your strip in this glue. If you have a needle tipped glue bottle, then you can just apply your glue directly onto your strip. But because I don't have that, I'm just going to dip my strip in some glue here. And then I want to position this one on this flower. So let's go ahead and do that. And then of course you can complete your flower, add your little marquees. I have some other colored ones here too for the leaves. And just really get creative with your placement and how you want things to look. Like there's really no one way to do this. And just be patient because this does take, and then also I would recommend maybe your tweezers for helping your shapes stay in place. Just be patient because this is, it can be a little bit time consuming, a little finicky, but it's well worth it once you're done with your project. So this is what you'll pretty much end up with and we're all good to go. You do have this great book at the library, The Modern Art of uh, Quilling, and it has a lot of wonderful projects in here. We do also have 3D quilling, and it has a lot more elaborate like projects with many, many shapes. So feel free to check these out. I would highly recommend them. They're really great. Okay, and thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Make sure you check out osceolalibrary.org for more information about our virtual programs and our services. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time.